Hi everyone, this is a third lesson uh, for the integration pack. I want to do something slightly different than what's in the pack for starting. So imagine you've got the line y equals x um, and you want the air, well you want to find the, the integral of x between 0 and 3. So I've got a line I'm looking between x is 0 and x is 3. So if I integrate it, I get a half of x squared between 0 and 3. If I put the 3 in and then put the 0 in, it gives me a half of 9. So it gives me 4 and a half. Now physically, what does it represent? So if I look between 0 and 3, I've got a triangle there. It's 3 wide, and it's 3 up. Now the area of that triangle is half the base times the height, which is 4 and a half. So integration between the limits, it gives me the area between the curve, or line, whatever you want, the limits, the boundaries of your area, so 1 and 3, and the x-axis. So it gives us all that. So it's the area under the curve, or between the curve and the x-axis, and the limits. That's what it physically does. So let's see if that kind of makes sense for what's there. But I thought the example's nice, because it actually works and shows you it does work. And we're not just making it up. So it says integration can be used to reverse differentiation. So that's what we've done so far. So we've changed the gradient function, the dy by dx equals, back into the curve. Uh, we integrate it without limits, and we need a plus c. Because a line or a curve, it's got like an infinite number of, of y, possible y-axis intercepts. So it forms this family of curves, doesn't it? This, well, the way I describe it is like a stack of Pringles on top of each other. Each Pringle is its own little curve going on forever. That's how I visualise it. The pack says, uh, with a, we'll, oh sorry, not with a, ah, can't copy, we'll have a Y intercept. There. So if we integrate with limits, we find the area between the curve, the x-axis, and the limits. So, so we don't need a plus two because area doesn't have a y-intercept. Hmm. What if you're doing an area over here then? It's crossing the y-intercept. Hmm, don't like the wording of that really. In theory, the c's cancel. Oh. The c's cancel. Uh, right, so we've got this lovely little diagram. So if I start with y, I can differentiate it to get dy by dx, the gradient function. I can integrate the gradient function to go back to the original curve. And I can integrate the curve to get the area. That's what that's saying. Marvellous. Right, let's have a look at this then. So it says find the area uh, between the curve y equals x squared plus 1. So x squared plus 1 looks like that, going through 1, from minus 2 to plus 3. There. Right, so that's the area that I want. To set it up, so I've got an integral between minus 2 and 3. Put the function in, which is x squared plus 1 dx. And that's everything I need now. So if I integrate it, so I've got a third x cubed plus x between minus 2 and 3. Put my 3 in, so I've got a third x cubed plus 3. Put the minus 2 in, a third minus 2 cubed plus a minus 2. Watch me get this wrong, so I've not, not got the calculator with me. So I've got 3 cubed divided by 3 is 3 squared, so that's 9 plus 3 is 12. I've got minus 2 cubed is minus 8, so I've got minus 8 over 3 
oops, minus 2. So minus 2 is minus 6, so I've got minus 14 over 3. Minus and minus gives me 14 over 3. 12 is 36 over 3, so I've got 50 over 3. So technically now, because it's an area, I should really put units squared, shouldn't I? There. You've got calculator. Um, so then it says, the diagram shows the curve for the example 4 minus x squared, find the shaded area. So for this one now, if you look, I need to find out what these points are here. I haven't got a clue what they are. So I need to find the rings. So I'm looking where 4 minus x squared is equal to 0. Now what I could do is in poly, put minus 1, 0, 4. Or I could be all old fashioned with it and do a little bit of algebra. Who knows, you might even enjoy it. There we go. So I've got a minus 2 and a 2. So my integral, my area, so integral side, so it's between minus 2 and 2 of my function dx. So I've got 4x minus a third x cubed between minus 2 and 2. Uh, can you get by more? Sum my numbers in, so I've got 4 lots of 2 minus a third 2 cubed. Then 4 lots of minus 2 minus a third minus 2 cubed. So I've got, you could do some calculator, I haven't got the calculator upstairs. Uh, what have we got? What have we got? What have we got? So we've got 4 times 2 is 8. I've got minus 8 over 3. So 8, 16, 24. 24 take 8, 16. So 16 over 3. We used to have to do these in our heads on the old module. That's why it's easier for me to do it. Uh, 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. But I'm bound to get smoke around now because I'm being cocky about it. Uh, plus, so that's going to be minus 8 over uh, 3, so minus minus is a plus, so you've got plus 8 over 3. So I've got, that's going to be the same idea, different signs, isn't it? So minus minus makes a plus, so add on 16 over 3, gives me 32 over 3, and that's squared. Ta da! There must be something for you to do now, surely. <gasps> There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Right, I'll stop it and we'll do another video.